worship. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. together, even while we are apart this Easter morning. It is a wonderful day to be together as the people of God, the people called by his name, and you indeed are. The name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, in whose name we gather and worship this morning. Amen. He is risen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. 
He is risen indeed. Alleluia. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. <laughs> he is, is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And so shall we. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we continue moving toward our message this morning and talking about the resurrection and, uh, and our Easter message, I, I want you to do this for me. Here's a little something for you to do at home. So if you're with somebody else in the house, uh, if you're in separate rooms or anything, uh, you might want to come together for this. Uh, but I want you to discuss this question. I want you to come up with at least five examples of unexpected changes you've experienced in the past month. Now, that shouldn't be too difficult, especially with all the coronavirus impacts and everything. But but I want you to get a little bit specific at least because I want you to come up with five, five examples of unexpected changes you've experienced in the past month. Talk about that uh, with people in your house. Uh, and if you come up with some, maybe type them in on Facebook if you're watching along live and uh, you can share some of your answers. People will share some of theirs. I'm going to play a little bit of music so you have time to think about this. We're going to take about 90 seconds, come up with five, at least five unexpected changes you've experienced in the past month. Go. So you came up with some unexpected changes, unexpected things that happened over the past month, and I'm sure they were great. I'm recording this ahead of time, so I can't really respond on the video to what you may have typed in on Facebook, but I'm sure because you're smart people, you came up with some really good things and some really interesting things. And you probably, you probably came up with a mix of things that were both bad in terms of what was unexpected, and potentially you came up with some good things that were unexpected as well. And I want you to 
hang on to that because we're going to get into our reading for today in uh, Matthew 28 verses 1 through 10 is where our gospel lesson comes from. And let me point out some unexpected things that take place there. It says, now after the Sabbath, the Sabbath being Saturday, right, in the, the Jewish Sabbath cycle and, and the week, uh, that sort of thing, after the Sabbath. So what day would be after the Sabbath? Yeah, Sunday. Yeah. So on Sunday, it says, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene, the other Mary, went to see the tomb. So the same day of the week that we happen to be gathering on today. Hmm, what a coincidence, huh? So it says there was a great earthquake. Now, that's kind of unexpected. Maybe, you know, we live here in the Bay Area and, and we have earthquakes, but, but they're never really forecast. Uh, we never quite expect them or schedule around them. They just sort of happen. Uh, and, and you realize afterward, oh, we had an earthquake. So there was a great earthquake. Four, an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. Now, that's pretty unexpected, I would say. Okay, an angel showing up. The earthquake is one thing, but the angel, that's really unexpected. And the guards have one sort of uh, response to this, I'll say. But the angel said to the women, and we're not told how they respond. The guards were afraid. I'm, I'm guessing the women were probably afraid a little bit, at least a little bit. They didn't expect this. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid. For I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen. As he said, come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I've told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy. A little bit of both, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, the angel said, don't be afraid, but there's still a little bit of fear. And there's this amazing, like, oh, this is, this is totally unexpected. Because what's the other unexpected thing here? Jesus is risen. He, the angel said, go look in the tomb. He's not there. So they went and looked. And they said, and then after you do that, go and tell his disciples. Go, go and share this thing. So they've got an unexpected visit from angels. They've got this unexpected happening that the tomb is empty and Jesus is alive. And they go and they depart quickly, it says, from the tomb with fear and great joy. And they ran to tell his disciples, they're going to do what they were asked. And behold, Jesus met them and said, greetings. <laughs> what? And they came and took hold of his feet and worshiped him. And then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee and there they will see me. So we have these unexpected things happening. There's, there's an angel that shows up. There's an empty tomb. And then all of a sudden, Jesus himself meets these women. And do you notice when these unexpected things happen, when the angel shows, when, the G, when Jesus shows up, how are they greeted? Do not fear. Do not be afraid. And then they're asked to do something. In both cases, right? They're asked to go and tell his disciples. Go and tell my friends. The angel sends them and Jesus sends them. And that's the message for you and I as well. Do not be afraid because Jesus is alive. Do not be afraid of unexpected things because the unexpected is good for you. Because the unexpected of Easter brings joy for you. So do not be afraid. Instead, go and celebrate. Go and tell people that he is risen. In fact, that's why we use that, that refrain throughout Easter all the time. You know, we're, we're modeling what, what the angel told the women, what Jesus told the women to do. Go and celebrate. Go tell his friends. Go tell them that, that I'm alive. And so we tell one another and we share this joy with one another. We share this joy with the world and with our friends and with the people around us. And we say, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is our gospel reading for Easter. Christ is risen today, Alleluia. Our triumphant holy day, Alleluia. Who did once upon the cross, Alleluia, suffer to redeem our
As we get into our Easter message this morning, I want to start by reading from our psalm. It's Psalm 16. I'll read verses 1 and 2, and then I'm going to jump to the end, verses 7 through 11. Uh, David writes this in Psalm 16. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me. And because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. There's a lot of good things in that psalm. We'll center this morning on verse 10 especially. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol or let your Holy One see corruption. We'll, we'll come back to those words as we get into our message this morning. But to start, I want to ask you a question. I want to ask, have you ever been hiking in the woods? I think most of you probably have. And if you've been on a hike in the woods, when you, when you go across a trail or you start uh, traipsing off the trail a little bit, now and then you'll come across uh, a down log or a tree that's fallen, those kind of things. And if it's been laying there for a while um, and it's uh, started the process of breaking down a little bit, if you, if you roll that tree over, what do you expect to see? All the creepy crawly things that live in those dark places, right? The little roly-poly bugs and maybe some worms and maybe some other things that you can't quite recognize or can't quite name, right? Yeah, in in the dark where decay happens, all those things are present. And they're they're it's part of the natural process, right? Of things breaking down. When something once living lays on the ground long enough, it starts to rot and decompose and fall apart. It's a part of decay, and decay is a part of this world. And decay is what we expect when something that used to be alive is laying there and is not alive any longer. But but in Psalm 16, it's not what David expected. He expected something different, right? For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol or let your Holy One see corruption. And this is the unexpected event of Easter. We just talked about some unexpected things. This is the unexpected event of Easter that that your Holy One did not see corruption, that the, the decay of this world where we had expect to find it, it wasn't taking place. And in those dark places where we expect that the creepy crawlies kind of take over, that didn't happen. I mean, you'd expect that a body laid in a tomb would begin that process of breaking down. And you'd expect that the dark of the grave would indeed invite the creepy crawlies to come out and encourage the deterioration of a corpse. But we celebrate Easter because the unexpected happened. The resurrection of Jesus, it runs contrary to what we see in this world. And it's the opposite of what we take for granted. It's the the decay that we expect to spread and kind of take over in dark places was unable to take over his body. This is unexpected news and this is good news. See, this is the news that we need to hear because there are so many dark places in our lives and in this world. And there are so many places where we see decay running rampant, where it seems to gain gain a foothold around us, and maybe even in our own lives. Because the darkness is not confined to tombs, and decay may be accelerated after death, but it starts long before. Some of the darkness in our lives and in our context definitely include widespread sickness and death, job losses, Isolation from friends and from family. Plus, decay is trying to gain a foothold in the dark places of our minds, right? Anxiety for myself and for people I care about is a pretty heavy topic. Questions loom over some of our future plans. And it's as if my head at those times becomes a home to all kinds of creepy crawlies. And this is why you and I need to Remember what happened. We'll remember what was so unexpected. And remember what happened when Jesus went into those dark places. He suffered loss. He faced death. He allowed the darkness of the grave to cover him, but the dark places didn't own him. Decay could not overtake him. For you will not let your Holy One see corruption, right? Guess what? 
The darkness, it couldn't own Jesus, and it doesn't own you either. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. See, in that one simple statement, the Apostle Paul both acknowledges the darkness around us and highlights the hope given to us. See, God's word is honest about about darkness and decay in this world. The Bible is pretty forthright about the difficulties that we face. It doesn't try to sugarcoat things. No, the, the Bible tells us we live in a world that's pretty tough and it can be pretty rough. And we walk through some things that are very hard. But the Bible also lets us know that the darkness will not win. See, Jesus is the light who came into the darkness. He's the life who entered this world full of death. He went to the dark places that we encounter. He experienced the darkness of death in the grave, but he came back. See, Jesus subdued the power of darkness. He set a limit and he said, no more, no further than this. He set a limit on darkness and death and decay. And and some of us have been reading through John's gospel. And I just love that verse in the first chapter, verse verse five. The light shines in the darkness. The darkness has not overcome it. And the darkness cannot overcome it because the light is Jesus. And he is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. See, this is not just good news. This is good news for you and for me. The new life that Jesus lives is the life given to you. The life which cannot be touched by decay is the life in which you share. And the light that overcomes the darkness is the light of life that is in you because of Jesus. Yes, coronavirus is still present in our world. And yes, we still experience loss, grief, and pain. And yes, darkness is around us. But we, as the people of God, find hope in Jesus. See, our God is stronger than the darkness. And yet, he entered the darkness. He entered the darkness, and because of that, he's present with us as a light in our dark places. And our God knows the decay which threatens us, yet he will not let his Holy One see corruption. See, David's words in Psalm 16 point to Jesus, and they point to you. Jesus is the Holy One. He's he's sent from God the Father to break the hold of darkness and death. And he did that on Easter. He was untouched by decay and the darkness could not overcome him. You are the Holy One in Psalm 16 as well. You are made holy in Christ and you share in his life. As God raised Jesus to new life, so also he gives this new life to you, his Holy One. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You know, as a kid, I remember in some of our worship settings, a pastor used to say, uh, let us bless the Lord. And the response of the congregation was always, thanks be to God. And I I always thought it was kind of funny because uh, the idea of blessing uh, and and thanks didn't seem to be the same thing. Uh, You know, I expected, you know, like if if somebody's going to bless me, I would expect to be, in a sense, given something. Um, But thanks wasn't something to give. It was more of a, a response because I've been given something. Um, and yet that call and response really reflects what worship is because there is absolutely nothing that we bring to our God, which is a blessing to him. 
uh, the only blessing that we give is our thanks and our praise. Uh, we come to worship to receive from him. And yet we do come to give thanks as well. And, and we come with joyful hearts. Uh, and a part of our worship every week is uh, bringing our songs and bringing ourselves uh, and indeed bringing our, our offerings uh, as a part of our life, as, um, as, a, as a portion of those blessings that God has given to us. Uh, we bless the Lord by saying, thank you, Lord. Uh, I want to do faithfully with this, what you've asked me to do. Uh, and so we bring a, we bring a portion back to him. Uh, and I encourage you to, to make that a part of your worship as well. Uh, I know many of you have, even during this shelter in place, uh, and you can mail gifts to Calvary. You can also give online, uh, at calvarysLZ.org. Uh, and realizing this video is, uh, shared, uh, beyond Calvary, uh, give, to the community where you're growing uh, would be my advice as a pastor. Um, give thanks to God uh, for the places and the people uh, that he's given you to grow with, uh, for the church that he's planted you in as a part of his church. Uh, that's a part of our offering. Uh, we, we bless the Lord and we say, thanks be to God, and we bring our offerings. And so as we do that, uh, let me offer this prayer. Father, we give you thanks for all your grace and all your goodness. Uh, we give you thanks for the resurrection of Jesus. We give you thanks for the gifts that it means for us. And we desire to bless you, but we really can't. We can only bring back what you've given to us. And so humbly we do that. We bring to you out of what you have blessed us with. And we say, thank you, Lord. We praise your name. Thanks be to God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Immediately following our online worship, if you're watching in real time, we'll be gathering on Zoom so that we can continue to worship and experience the community that God gives us with brothers and sisters in Christ. It's a great opportunity for us to share prayer requests and actually pray with one another uh, and, uh, and cover some other aspects of worship that, that just don't fit well in a video format. I'm glad that you've been able to watch uh, and I'm glad that we have been able to gather together around God's word this wonderful day, uh, this Easter Sunday. Uh, indeed, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now go with this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give to you his peace. Amen. Alleluia. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. 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 Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And so shall we. Hallelujah. 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 H